never stop It's an uphill climb But if you've got the time You just keep climbing Until you reach the top And there'll be times When the world's not on your side And you'll cry But you'll always get by No when There's a dream on the horizon And you're running through the night Happy Homebrew Wednesday guys, cheers. How you doing? How's it going? Yeah. It's actually a nice beer. This is a, oh, don't mind the music. This is, uh, back in 1988, I wrote a song for the Calgary Olympics in Canada. And I showed you the back. You saw who was on that. Um, Rick Emmett from Triumph, Getty, er, Alex Lifeson, Lifeson from Rush were on this album. And Leona Boyd, I don't know if you know Leona Boyd from Canada, the guitarist. It's cool to be on there with those people. I didn't get to meet them, of course. Of course, I did. I, I did meet Leona Boyd actually, but I didn't get to meet Rick or uh, Alex. Damn it! Um, but I got Alex's guitar pick. I have his guitar pick. I, I put away, but I do have his pick, and it says Alex Lifeson right on it. So there you go. Okay. So, cheers. Now, uh, I don't remember whether I was drinking this last week or not, because um, I haven't had a lot to drink at all. I've been sick. I'm still a little bit sick. I'm feeling much better though. But this cold does stick around for quite a while. Um, by the way, what you saw at the beginning there, that's our furnace. It just keeps us warm in here. Um, but this is a, um, a Cooper's English Bitter with added hop, uh, uh, added um, uh, grains. Chocolate malt, Crystal 60. I think I was drinking it last week on my homebrew Wednesday, but I can't remember. Um, it's very it's pretty dark, so I can't see through it, but it is relatively clear if you do get a light, which I, I've got one big one on up there. Um, my old fluorescent light, which takes about five minutes to come on. It flickers and blinks and all kinds of stuff, and then finally it kicks in. Probably needs a new ballast. So, uh, yeah, happy Homebrew Wednesday. Um, let me take another, another go here. Ever so slightly, you can taste the chocolate malt in that. Just, I only put a little bit in. It almost tastes like someone poured a little bit of coffee in here. And of course the crystal adds a sort of a slight candy sweetness to it. And there's the bitterness from the Cooper's English Bitter. So it kind of balances out nicely. Um, it would have been nicer with if I added some hops to it, but I didn't. So there you go. Because it's a little bit too bitter. It needs it needs a it needs somebody on the other end of the teeter totter um, to balance it out. Maybe some hops, but oh well, that's what we do. We experiment when we home brew. Today, I don't have. I will tell you up front. I got some stuff to talk about, but I don't have anything brewing, and that's because I've been sick all week to the point where I just really haven't felt like drinking very much. I had quite a few beers on my last Friday night broadcast, but after that. Um, and before that, I didn't, I haven't really been doing a lot of beer drinking, so maybe it's a good thing, sort of detoxing a little bit. Um, I got myself a bottle of rum, and, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a little shot of it at the end of this video. Um, so, I think that, you know, one thing that goes well with beer is music. And that's why I sort of started out the video with, uh, let me just move that arm back so I don't knock it. Um, start out the video with that just because it's the only song I can only play my own music on these videos otherwise I'll get nailed by YouTube or whoever so otherwise I might have thrown on some Rush for you or something because <laughs> I love Rush I'm, I've decided come the new year because I haven't really got much money right now because it's Christmas and everything come the new year I am going to obtain one Rush album on vinyl per month whether it be eBay Amazon or um, down at my local record store, wherever I can find them, one a month. 
because some of them are pretty expensive. This one here, let me just go down and get it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me find it. It's in here. Where the heck is it? There it is. This one, let me put my beer down so I don't get confused here and spill something. Um, this was a gift from a friend of mine who I've never met in person, but he's a online friend of mine. Very good friend, actually. Um, his name is uh, Rich uh, Goyette, and um, he has a, a new album out, actually. So he sent me this. I'm going to take it out of the out of the plastic here. And it's the Rush um, um, Hold Your Fire record, which came out around the same time the Dream on the Horizon one, maybe a bit after. And uh, it's it, it, this thing's worth... I don't know if Rich knows this, but it's worth about 50 bucks or more because it has uh, the original um, label on the vinyl. Let me just take it out and make sure I've got it the right way around here. It's got the original, I guess this is called a um, sampler label or something? I can't remember. But apparently this label is not the label that's on most of these. You would just get the Anthem label or the Mercury label. Um, so this is rare. And you know what? It sounds absolutely beautiful. <laughs> it just does. It sounds so good. And I, I want to do a whole video. I'm talking about vinyl. I'm just going to set it down there for now talking about vinyl and why it sounds better. People think, well, how can it sound better if it's mechanical and there's pit pops and scratches? Well, if you take good care of it, there's no pops and scratches or very little. The reason why vinyl sometimes sounds better, just the very nature of the way the sound is reproduced, it's, it's got a nice warmth to it. There's a certain tonal quality that the mechanical devices such as the turntable, tone arm, stylus, whatnot, uh, add to it. I mean, it's analog, you know? But the main reason they can sound better is because of the mastering. Mastering means when they take the final recordings from the studio and they take them to the pressing plant, well, not quite the pressing plant, but the stage before the pressing plant, and somebody manipulates the audio for a final time just to get it just right before it gets pressed onto either a CD or a vinyl or whatever. And the mastering for a vinyl is different than the mastering for a CD. And most, a lot of people, including myself, prefer that mastering technique. It's not so squashed and, and compact. It sounds more open and airy and dynamic. And, uh, and so a lot of times that's why, and even when L, uh, groups release vinyl today, for instance, Rush released their latest album, um, Clockwork Angels, on both vinyl and CD, and of course MP3, and the vinyl and the CD have two different, they were mastered two different ways, and I've compared them both, and hands down, I'm not just talking about, you know, somebody who's got golden ears and can hear everything, no, you'd notice the difference, black and white the vinyl sounds much better because of the way it was mastered and, and you know, manipulated. So anyway, that's, uh, that's my vinyl talk for today. I'm going to do an entire video series. I really want to become part of the vinyl community. It's called VC on YouTube. I'd love to become part of the vinyl community. I am a vinyl person. I collect. I play them. Um, I enjoy it. It's not just a fad for me. It's, it's going to be forever for me as long as I'm around, as, or as long as these things are around. And so I want to become part of the vinyl community, which means I need, I need to make some vinyl videos. Uh, turntable setup, um, maybe showing some of my vinyl records. So some of my YouTube stuff might not be brewing related in the near future, but hey, that's not all, that's never been a problem in the past. So, um, you know, you don't have to watch it if it's not something you think you'll be interested in. Hmm bloody it, you know it's got a bit of a sour taste to it and that's because the the original package of yeast that I pitched didn't do anything for 24 hours nothing happened 
So I repitched another package of yeast and then it took off and went nuts. I'm pretty sure in that 24 hours it caught a slight um, infection, which means that it's a little bit, tiny, tiny bit sour. Now I could be wrong. Um, maybe it just tastes like that because of the recipe, but it does have a slight, just a hint of a sour taste to it. And, I, and an infection is not necessarily a bad thing it's not something you want because you can't really control it but in this case it's just it just changed the flavor a little bit it didn't ruin the beer just because a beer gets infected beer all beers are infected well except the ones you buy in the store because they're they're dead they're pasteurized and they're dead beers these are alive these beers are they have living yeast in them and they are you know organically alive and if you, you leave one of these sitting out overnight it will rot if you leave a store-bought beer sitting out overnight, you can literally drink it the next night. Haven't we all done that? You know, at a you've had a party in your house, <laughs> and the next day there's like half a dozen half half or half a dozen full beers sitting around. People open them and forgot about them. I put them in the fridge. They they taste fine. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with them because they don't go bad. They're sterile. You know, this stuff is not. This is alive. This is the real deal. So, speaking of audio, I don't know if you, I got asked a couple weeks ago or last week, somebody asked me um, what I use for my sound system down here, for my, you know, my stereo, basically. So I'll just take the camera and I'll just, I'll show you. And I, all this stuff was purchased at Value Village, a thrift store. Okay. I'm going to start off with the speakers. I have six speakers here, one, two, three, four, five, six. That one's missing a dust cover. Uh, not doesn't really matter, it seems fine. I'm, I'll get another one somewhere. Um, all six of these speakers are hooked up to this amplifier here. This amplifier I obtained from Value Village. It was $40. It's a Nico. It's a professional rack mounted well i don't know if it's professional but it's a high-end rack mount it's 250 watts um and that's 250 real watts not the watts that you hear about these days when they when you buy like a little boom box thing little sh bookshelf stereo and and they tell you it's a thousand watts that's rubbish they're not a thousand watts that's a unfortunately power when it comes to stereos, I don't know how they do it, but they somehow lie about it. Um, a thousand watts would blow your windows out of your house. They're not a thousand watts. This thing is way louder than those home theater to box things or little wall units that say they're a thousand watts. This thing is way louder than those. It's really 250 watts. It's not fake. Here's the preamp that came with it. This was $25. This wasn't even the same part of the store. It was on a completely different shelf, and I just... Once I had the amp in my hands, then I saw this thing. Um, it it's the preamp is where you plug everything in and control everything, right? And then the amp is just the thing that boost the boot you know powers the speakers. It doesn't have anything on it except power speakers and the the meters. But so I can go with um, speakers A, which are the big ones. Or I can go with B, which are these ones, and I've got these hooked in series. Okay, each of these. So that one and that one are in series, and that one and that one are in series. They're four ohms each, so that makes eight ohms. Actually, I think one of them are six ohms and one of them's four, so that makes ten ohms. So that's fine. The amp ha handles anything from four to sixteen ohms. Or I can put them both on together, and I'm telling you, this sounds really really nice now I realize the speakers aren't really far apart that's that's the best I can do right now eventually I'm going to rearrange the basement and put the speakers down on the floor where they belong and uh, at least the big ones anyway and uh, put them farther apart but anyways that's what I've got the top one there is another it's a receiver I have I purchased at Value Village it actually does work but it takes about 20 minutes to work I think it's a bad capacitor a bad solder or something needs to heat up before it will operate properly 
but it's a good little amp and it's got a radio in it and stuff. So that's that's what I power things with. The turntable gets plugged straight into the power amp because uh, it's or sorry preamp because it's got the uh, you know the turntable preamp in it. I'm not going to go through my circuitry here. It's too complex, but you know probably bore you to death. When I turn the big speakers off and crank up the small ones, which I think are 100 watts each, so I don't have to worry about blowing them. Uh, well, unless I, you know, really overdo it. Um, you'd be surprised if you came here and heard just the small speakers. You'd be very surprised, very surprised. And I've been into stereo and audio equipment for all my, you know, since I was a teenager. So um, I'll tell you, they sound amazing. And then when you click on the big ones, it's like, whoa, whoa now we're cooking. So um, that's, uh, that's my setup for that. And if you saw my turntable. And um, it's, it's a gem. I, I love it. So as far as brewing goes, um, like I said, I haven't done any um, in the past week and a half. So I'm behind. I actually had to buy beer. And for Canadians, that's really, that's a big deal. That's like, you know, you don't, <laughs> you, you go without groceries for a week, you know. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, so uh, it's expensive. You know what? Go on the web, go online, on Google, and look up um, Ontario, the beer store. Just type Ontario, the beer store. And you'll find the website for the Ontario beer stores. And then you'll, you go, make your way through there to find the prices of the beers. Okay, go to, go to beer brands or search for a beer or whatever. Search for a beer that you recognize, like a, you know, a, a brand name beer like, you know, Labatt's or, or you know, Coors or whatever. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and look at the prices. Hey, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you what the prices are. You can look that up for yourself and you'll, you'll be crapping yourself if you live in the U.S. or in some other places, how expensive it is. Uh, tonight, actually... I, but after I do this video, I have to brew a batch of wine and a, a, a Cooper's kit. I'm just going to throw down a, a quickie just to get it in there. I was supposed to do it last week, but I didn't. I was, didn't feel well. So that's what I've got. And I think I'm probably out of time. We'll take another little listen to that record there, if you don't mind. If you want to hear more of my um, music, my music that I wrote and recorded, you can go to craigfaraway.com and click on the music section and they're all free. You can download them for free. Please burn them to CDs, give them to friends, whatever you want to do. Eventually I may sell compact disc copies of the songs. I'm not sure. Um, people keep bugging me. Why don't you make money off this? Why don't you, you know, and why didn't I become, you know, get into the industry, which is a whole other story altogether. And then I don't have time to explain that right now, but I will eventually. We'll tell the whole story. Big story there. Um, so yeah, go there and, and just listen to them. If you don't, if you you know you might not like them, but if you do, then you're welcome to play them and burn them and put them on your devices, your iPods or whatever, and and just enjoy it because that's what it's for. I never wrote music with the intent of making any money off of it, so. Um, and there comes my nice warming furnace again coming on. So it's probably been about 20 minutes. Um, also, please, if you have to get a hold of me for any reason, the best way to do it, I mean, first of all, leave a comment down below. That's, the, that's a great thing to do. Um, please rate the video, if you know what I mean. And um, if you really need to get a hold of me and ask me something, 17crew.com is where you'd need to go for that. I have my own section in there and you can personal message me there as well. Plus, browse the rest of the forum. There's great information in there from our community. So that's 17crew.com. Of course, t-shirts, tgt-shirts.com for the Craig Tube shirts. I'm not wearing one right now I'm because I'm wearing this this thing here. So it doesn't, you know, doesn't matter. Well, uh, let's. I'm going to put the stylus back down and um, go back to listen to some tunes. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you Friday, maybe. If not, we'll see you on future videos here once I get this over with. <sighs> I'll be doing lots more videos because i got to get caught up. All right. Oh, 
Oh, I almost forgot. Hang on. Jeez. That was the most important part of the whole video. Holy shit, I've already had a little bit of that, haven't I? That's not from today. <laughs> Believe me, I bought this on like Saturday or something, so today's Wednesday. Just a little. <laughs> All right, guys, so here you have it. Double-fisted. <laughs> Cheers.